Okay, in this video what I'd like to do is talk about the difference between electro-pneumatics and pneumatic control. Okay, and so in, in schools and sometimes out in the industry, you will see where you use pneumatic signals to control other pneumatic equipment. But the trend in most of the systems now use electricity to control directional control valves in pneumatics. This is by far the most common thing that's out there. So it's good to understand that they're accomplishing the same thing and if you understand one it will definitely help you to understand another. So I've built just four very simplistic circuits and I'd like to walk through them with you just so you have a concept of how you can translate what you learn in let's say like a pneumatics class into what you can learn when you start to get into electro pneumatics PLCs, even a ladder diagram that controls a single solenoid. So here I just have a real basic circuit. So I have a 3-2 directional control valve push button controlling a 3-2 air actuated push button. All right, now the advantage of this is this directional control valve can be very close to the single acting cylinder. This can be located off away from the cylinder at a control panel or something like that. And so I can come here and activate it. Air will come up, reposition the 3-2 into an open position, and extend the cylinder. When I release the push button, the spring on the 3-2 uh, external pneumatic control, directional control valve, returns it. So if we wanted to break this down into maybe some common terminology, this cylinder here would be the control. Okay, maybe sometimes people would say the control uh, circuit. This here would be the power circuit. Okay, so we'd have a power circuit here and then our control circuit here. These terms get thrown around a lot, especially in motor controls where you have like a very distinct, here's my control circuit, here's my power circuit. But the same can be held true for any pneumatic circuit or hydraulic circuit that has a system like this. So here I have the electro pneumatic version of this one. So I come over here, I activate the start button. This will engage the solenoid. This here is the electro, the electric control circuit. Okay. So when I push this, it's going to activate this. Solenoid two is represented by this symbol in the, um, the control circuit. In the power circuit, which is our pneumatic, it's represented by this, sim this symbol here. So when I come over here and I push this, it's going to engage this, which will activate this and shift the spool into its open position. So you can see here now, this is behaving exactly like the one before. Okay, I push this, let it go, it retracts. These circuits are identical, except that this is using an electrical push button or this is using a pneumatic push button, and they're the equivalent of each other. So if you're in a room that can't have any electricity or an older system that has a pneumatic control, like the one on the left here, great. But more than likely, you're going to see something like this in the electro-pneumatic schematic uh, that will actually activate like this, and this can be run off of a PLC or a simple push button, depending on what the circuit calls for. We can expand the conversation on this to just get to a double acting cylinder that's going to operate and behave exactly the same. So here I have a 5-2 directional control valve being controlled by a 3-2. Again, this can be located, you know, within a couple of feet, all right, maybe up to 10 feet or a little bit farther if it had to be from the cylinder, okay? This can be located at the operator station or wherever is needed. So I activate this extend the cylinder, I let it go, the spring return here pushes it back, the cylinder retracts. Okay. Now I have the same electro-pneumatic circuit over here, or the equivalent, if you will, and the same electrical diagram. So again, SOL1 is the same here as uh, this SOL. They are physically the exact same component. One's just being represented in the control circuit. This is its representation in the power circuit. So I come here, activate this, Cylinder extends, let it go, the cylinder retracts. Electro pneumatics is typically preferred because it's much easier to run electrical wires and the signals will travel farther in an electrical wire compared to a pneumatic signal. Okay, again, these do exist out here still. They're not as prevalent, but every once in a while you will run into them. And you're also, it's a very good way to actually train people 
in the process of understanding directional control valves in pneumatic systems. So you might see this, you might not, but if you're going to work in industry, you will absolutely begin to see circuits like this and understanding and relating between the two is really, really important. And especially understanding that they're accomplishing the same thing. One just uses electricity to control pneumatics and the other uses pneumatics to control pneumatics. All right, well, thanks for watching. And um, if you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much.